is a viewpoint special presented by Bob Geldof. But now we're joining Alistair Burnett and Sandy Gall at ITN for the news at 10. Another Kuwaiti tanker will sail under the Red Ensign. The Hunkerford Families Fund, they want 20 times more. How Europe's summer, like Britain's, is under the weather. The divers work on the Titanic, but should they? And the children who go joyriding, the cost is rising too. Good evening. Another Kuwaiti oil tanker is switching to the British flag for its journeys up and down the Gulf. This was confirmed tonight as the political row over reflagging grew, and the government repeated there was no change of policy. A subsidiary of Kuwait's National Oil Company said in London this evening that the supertanker Al Fayha is about to be re registered, the fourth Kuwaiti operated ship to fly the Red Ensign. The Royal Navy's Armilla Patrol, which protects British shipping in the Gulf, extends only to Bahrain, nearly 300 miles short of the oil loading bays in Kuwait. The Foreign Secretary, Sir Geoffrey Howe, says reflagging is a purely administrative matter. The Shadow Defence Secretary, Mr Denzel Davis, said the Royal Navy must not be used as a security guard for states which can't protect their own ships. This is the ship which has led to accusations that Britain is getting in over its head in the Gulf War, the 267,000-tonne supercarrier Al Fayyir. Its Kuwaiti owners plan to turn it into a British ship by transferring it to a British subsidiary. They've already made another of their ships, the Modi British, by registering it in Gibraltar, and they've chartered two more tankers entitled to fly the Red Ensign. It might have gone unnoticed had not the American State Department put their foot in it by calling a press conference to praise Britain. We welcome actions such as this that contribute to the maintenance of free navigation and to the safety of commercial shipping in international waters in or near the Gulf. Foreign Secretary Sir Geoffrey Howe was aghast. There was no political significance in the reflagging at all, he said. The position is today, as it always has been, that under certain procedures, it is possible to apply for registration uh, of a ship on the British Register. It's possible, if you wish, to charter British ships. That's always been the position. It's a purely administrative matter. Not true, said Labour spokesman on the Middle East. Reflagging was political. It's a political decision. The Americans recognised that it's a political decision because they congratulated the British government for it today. And given that it's a political decision, the government should say that it's not on and that we're not going to be sucked into a conflict over which we've got no control and where the basic policy is wrong and we distrust it. In recent years, most reflagging has been away from Britain to countries like Panama with cheap third world crews. British seamen have opposed this, but they're equally opposed to Kuwaiti ships becoming British. I don't think Iran minds at all that British warships are escorting or accompanying, whatever the phrase is, uh, ships which are genuinely British. Um, but uh, when we start uh, extending that protection to others, I believe that Iran will then see all British flag ships as fair game. As Foreign Secretary, Sir Geoffrey Howe can do little to stop reflagging. But the Secretary of State for Transport, Paul Channon, can if he thinks it's in British interest to do so. If the number of Kuwaiti tankers seeking the protection of the Red Ensign continues to grow, that's an option the government may begin to consider. There are unconfirmed reports tonight that the last of the 11 tankers reflagged by America have now started their voyage up the Gulf, escorted by American warships. The carrier Guadalcanal is again in action with its mine-sweeping helicopters. It escorted the previous convoy out of the Gulf yesterday. The convoy, now safely out of the Gulf, had steamed a course close to the Iranians' war exclusion zone, their route perhaps accounting for the build-up of tension. Aboard the helicopter carrier Guadalcanal, the crew was called to general quarters as the ship passed close to several Iranian islands on the way out. On the carrier's deck, an awesome display of firepower. Several types of helicopters crowded on the landing platform. The crews were manning all guns. None of the sailors, it seemed, were in any doubt as to where the threat lay. Shells clearly destined for only one country. The Iranians are still uh, claiming that they uh, are interested in
harassing, if you will, our, our convoys, although I don't know that it's been quite as specific.